Hey, it's Mike, Social Religion Dystopia, Known versus Belief. I think I'm going to take some Chintosin. It's supposed to help detox you. Get rid of some of the, I guess, the bacteria in you. Back in this probably with MS, so anyways. We're going to get into reading, uh, John, obviously. And we're going to try to um, see how far we go with this. I want to focus on the Lord of all spirits, the King of kings, the Lord of lords, the beginning and the end, the Alpha and the Omega, the great Amen, the Lord God Almighty, Emmanuel, Jesus, the Messiah. Those that think I'm religious, you don't understand me at all. Those that think that uh, focusing on God is religious, don't understand God. Now this is the story of when God came upon the earth in the flesh to pay for the sins of mankind. It's not, it's not a man, not a man with a beard. It's clear in the text, and many cultures recognize that uh, the one supreme God, the only God that ever was and ever will be, the God who created the heavens and the earth and divided the waters from the waters, created the firmament, the house, the sun, moon, and stars. That God, the God that Abraham recognized, Adam once, and Adam knew. Is one and the same in Jesus Christ. You can go to church all you want, and you'll never know God. It's designed to ensnare you and keep you from having a personal relationship with the one and true God. You are now the temple. If you read this book all the way through, the collection of the books in the New Testament, to the very end, which the very end truly is, the very last chapter of the book of Revelation, you will know. There's only one God, only one high priest. And you can have a personal relationship with the Lord of all spirits. And the funny thing is, with the, once you have that and you've come to, to grips with that and, and embrace it, and the truth. By the way, it's not about becoming a, nun, a monk or a nun or getting a, a, a degree in some seminary. To become some theologian or become some pastor or priest or elder of some church. No, it's about having a personal relationship with God. And that church, that group, those Sadducees, Pharisees, scribes and elders of our day cannot give you what God can give you. Once God opens your eyes, you can have all sorts of amazing things happen. Good and bad. Because remember, the world's at enmity with God. Do it, but um, you will grow immensely from it. And remember, the pearl of great praise is to be with God again, eternally, in your spirit. The spirit man, spirit woman. This is good news. And something to certainly to aspire and to work towards. And it's important to know who that one true God is, the Lord of all spirits. Enoch knew about him. Many knew about him in the past. It's amazing we are in a situation with how the Roman Empire and its uh, propaganda apparatus and uh, managed by um, the synagogue of Satan and the Jesuits and others looks like them. Through their learning against learning have just really cluttered the truth. People know a whole bunch about nothing. A whole bunch about theories that have still not been proven. Yet they, we, believe in that his gospel is the truth. Maybe it's time to actually go back and look into these words. But not and become a religious fanatic. Don't be under the spell and the curse of religion. Have a personal relationship with the Lord of all spirits. See what happens.
Chapter 18 of John When Jesus had spoken these words, he went forth with his disciples over the brook of uh, Cedron, I guess it is, or Cedron, um, where was a garden, into the which he, ent he entered and his disciples. And Judas also, which betrayed him, knew the place, for Jesus oft times resorted thither with his disciples. Judas then, having received a band of men and officers from the chief priests and Pharisees, cometh thither with lanterns and torches and weapons. And Jesus therefore, knowing all things that should come upon him, went forth and said unto them, Whom seek ye? And they answered him, Jesus of Nazareth. And Jesus said unto them, I am he. And Judas also, which betrayed him, stood with them. And as, as soon then as he had said unto them, I he thee, I guess, powerful three words, they went backwards and fell on the ground. And then asked he them again, Whom seek ye? And they said, Jesus of Nazareth. And Jesus answered, I have told you that I am he. Three times. If therefore ye seek me, let these go their way. That the saying might be fulfilled, which he spake of them which thou gavest me, have I lost none. Then Simon Peter, having a sword, drew it, and smote the right excuse me, smote the high priest's servant, and cut off his right ear. And the servant's name was Malchus. Then said Jesus unto Peter, Put up thy sword into thy sheath. The cup which my father hath given me, shall I not drink it? Interesting. Then the band and the captain and the officers of the Jews took Jesus and bound him and led him away to Annas first, for he was the father-in-law of Cephas, which was the high priest that same year. Now Cephas was he which gave counsel to the Jews that it was expedient that one man should die for the people. And Simon followed Jesus, and so did another disciple. And that disciple was known unto the high priest, and went in with Jesus into the palace of the high priest. But Peter stood at the door without. Then went out the other di disciple, which was known unto the high priest, and spake unto her that kept the door, and brought in Peter. Then said the, the damsel that kept the door unto Peter, Art not thou also one of the disciples? He saith, I am not. And the servants and the officers stood there, who had made the fire of coals, for it was cold, and they warmed themselves. And Peter stood with them, and warmed himself. The high priest then asked Jesus of the disciples and of the doctor. And you know this other disciple that led Peter in. I wonder if that was Judas Iscariot. So, I don't know. I don't know. Sounds like it. Why would it not? If they, he's the one that went with them into uh, with the high priest. I wonder if that's in this. <clears throat> uh, sounds like it, doesn't it? And the high priest then asked Jesus of the, his disciples and of his doctor. And Jesus answered, I spake openly to the world. I ever taught in the synagogue and in the temple, whether the Jews always resort, and in secret I, excuse me, have I said nothing. Why askest thou me? Ask them which heard me, what I have said unto them. Behold, they know what I said. And when he had thus spoken, one of the officers which stood by struck Jesus with the palm of his hand, saying, Answerest thou the high priest so? 
course, we know who the real high priest is, isn't it? So they are themselves for being imposters at this point. And Jesus answered him, I have spoken, I, if I have spoken evil, bear witness of the evil. But if well, why smitest thou me? Now Annas had sent him bound unto Cepheus, the high priest. And Simon Peter stood and warned himself. They said, therefore unto him, Art not thou one of the disciples? And he denied it and said, I am not. Isn't that interesting how the role play between Simon Peter, when Jesus calls him, Get thee behind me, Satan. Jesus says, I am he. And Simon is saying, I am not. Mm -hmm. There's a lot that can be, you know, reflected upon about that. Um, one of the servants of the high priest, being his kinsman, whose ear Peter cut off, said, Did not I see thee in the garden with him? And Peter, <laughs> and Peter then denied again. <clears throat> Yeah, not me. It was the dude who cut off your ear. And immediately the, the, the cock crew. Then led they Jesus from Cepheus unto the hall of judgment. And it was early, and they themselves went not into the hall, uh, judgment hall, excuse me, lest they should be defiled. But they that might eat the Passover. Pilate then went out unto them and said what accusation bring ye against this man and they answered and said unto him if he were not a malefactor he would not ha have been excuse me he would not have delivered we would not have delivered him up unto thee then said Pilate unto them take ye him and judge him according to your your law the Jews therefore said unto him, It is not lawful for us to put any man to death. Isn't that interesting how they used other people to do their dirty business? Does this sound familiar today? That the saying of Jesus might be fulfilled, which he spake, at death, signifying what death he should die. Then Pilate entered into the judgment hall again, and called Jesus, and said unto him, Art thou the king of the Jews? And he answered him, Sayest thou this thing of thyself, or did others tell it thee of me? And Pilate answered, I am I a Jew? Thine own nation and thy ch the chief priests have delivered thee unto me. What hast thou done? And Jesus answered, And Jesus answered, My kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom were of this world, and remember this, there's a lot of people looking for it here in this world, <clears throat> then would he, my servants fight that I should not be delivered to the Jews. But now is my kingdom not from hence. Pilate therefore said unto him, Art thou the king then? Jesus answered, Thou sayest that I am a king. To this end was I born, for this cause came I into the world, that I should bear witness unto the truth. Everyone that is of the truth heareth my voice. He is a king, a new Jerusalem, and heavenly realm on the other side. And within you, the heaven is within you now. It's not some place brick and mortar or some man-made institution. Pilate said unto him, What is the truth? And when he had s said this, he went out again unto the Jews and said unto them, I f and find in him no fault at all. But ye have a custom that I should release unto you one at the Passover. Will, I, will ye therefore that I release unto you the king of the Jews? And they cried then then cried they all again saying no not this not this I'm putting words into this then cried they all again saying not this man but Barnabas now Barnabas was a robber and a man of the world <clears throat> I added that 
chapter 19. Then Pilate therefore took Jesus and scourged him, and the soldiers plaited a crown of thorns and put it on his head, and they put on him a purple robe and said, Hail, King of the Jews! And they smote him with their hands. And Pilate therefore went forth again, saith unto them, Behold, I bring him forth to you, that ye may know that I find no fault in him. Then came Jesus forth, wearing a crown of thorns and a purple robe, and Pilate said unto them, Behold the man. And when the chief priests, therefore an officer, saw him, they cried out, saying, Crucify him, crucify him. Pilate said unto them, Take ye, take ye him and crucify him, for I find no fault in him. And the Jews answered him, We have a law, and by our law he ought to die. Be it because he made himself the Son of God. And they were so wicked back then. And when Pilate therefore heard that saying, he was the more afraid and went again into the judgment hall and said unto Jesus, Whence art thou? But Jesus gave him no answer. Said, Where did he come from? Where did you come from? <clears throat> then said Pilate unto him, Speaketh thou not unto me, knowest thou not that I have power to crucify thee, and have power to release thee? And Jesus answered, Thou couldst not have power at all against me, except it were given thee from above. Therefore he that delivered me unto thee hath the greater sin. In other words, he's putting all the responsibility and the blame on the, the Pharisees, Sadducees, scribes, and elders, the leadership of the Israel, the theocratic dictatorship, dystopic nightmare called Israel at this point. It was not a good place to be. They had long abandoned God and put men in charge and put their religion first and foremost. <clears throat> and from thenceforth Pilate sought to release him, but the Jews cried out, saying, If thou let this man go, thou art not Caesar's friend. Who, whosoever maketh him a king speaketh against Caesar. When Pilate Therefore heard that saying, he brought the Jesus forth and sat down in the judgment seat in the place that is called the pavement. But in Hebrews, Gabbatha, and it was the preparation of the Passover at about the sixth hour. There's that sixth again. And he saith unto the Jews, Behold your king. But they cried out, Away with him, away with him, crucify him. Pilate saith unto them, Shall I crucify your king? And the chief priests priest answered, We have no king but Caesar. And at that moment, it was set in stone. The chief priests of Israel had abandoned the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, officially, and put their heart and their and their dedication to what King? Caesar. And nothing's changed after all these centuries, literally. If you want to understand the motives of certain groups of the Roman Empire that still exist today, understand the proclamation that they, they said literally before God in the flesh. You understand that? The magnitude of that. And there is no reason for anyone who desires to be with the Lord of Lord, King of Kings, Lord of all spirits, to have a relationship with Him and have anything to do with anybody that is part of we 
have no king but Caesar. And if you think there's anything going on, there's anything different going on today in 2022, almost 2,000 years later, allegedly, you have some serious contemplation and meditation. You must ponder on what you're thinking. I would have no association with anything that's going on over in the Middle East. For it's a giant deception. A brilliantly evil one, but it's a giant deception. And it has zero connection to the Bible and is complete contradiction to everything the Bible says. Including the Old Testament, folks. Then delivered he, therefore, unto them to be crucified. And they took Jesus and led him away. And he, bearing his cross, went forth into a place called the place of a skull, which is called in Hebrew Golgotha, where they crucified him and two others with him on either side, and Jesus in the midst. And Pilate wrote a title and put it on a cross, and his writing was Jesus of Nazareth, the King of the Jews. This title then read many of the Jews, for the place where Jesus was crucified was nigh to the city, and it was written in Hebrew, Greek, and Latin. Then said the chief priest and uh, uh, the chief priest of the Jews to Pilate, "Write not King of the Jews," but he said, "But that he said, I am the King of the Jews." Pilate answered, "What I have written." I have written. Very symbolic. We are we have no king but one Caesar and Pilate's like, no, I'm not buying your crap, not one bit. They literally Pilate knew he was, they were they were lying to him. And then it, many of the high priests knew in their blasphemous darkened souls the truth that Jesus actually was their king but they cherish the things of this more world more than God Pilate answered what I have written I have written then the soldiers when they had crucified Jesus took his garments and made four parts to every soldier a part and also his coat, and now the coat was without seam, woven from the top throughout. Isn't that interesting? And they said, therefore, among themselves, Let us not rent it, but cast lots for it, whose it, whose it shall be, that the scripture might be fulfilled, which saith, They parted my raiment among them, and for my vesture they, laid, they did cast lots. These things, therefore, the soldiers did. Now there stood by the cross of Jesus his mother, his mother's sister, Mary, the wife of, 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 of uh, uh, Cleophas, Cle, Cleophas, the wife of Cleophas, and uh, Mary Magdalene. And when Jesus therefore said, and, there, uh, and when Jesus therefore saw his mother and the disciples standing by whom he loved he saith unto his mother woman behold thy son interesting then said he to the disciples behold thy mother and from that hour the disciples took her under his own house Let me trust that again. And after that hour, and from that hour, that disciple took her unto his own home. Duh. After this, Jesus, knowing that all things were now accomplished, that the scripture might be fulfilled, saith, I thirst. And now there was set a vessel 
full of vinegar and they filled a sponge with vinegar and put it upon Hippus or Hispus, excuse me, and put it to his mouth. And when Jesus therefore had received the vinegar, he said, It is finished. And he bowed his head and gave up the ghost. The Jews therefore, because it was the preparation that the body should not remain upon the cross on the Sabbath day, because their religion is more important than God, for that Sabbath day was a high day, high holidays we hear today, don't we? Besought Pilate that their legs might be broken, that they might be taken down. Then came the soldiers and broke the legs of the first. He's a barbaric God. And the other which was crucified with him. Remember, these are the synagogue of Satan, the elders, the high priests of the synagogue of Satan. Pure evil. As you can see. <clears throat> But when it came to Jesus and saw that he was dead already, they break not his legs. But one of the soldiers with a spear pierced his side, forthwith came there out blood and water, and he that was and he that saw it bear record, and his record is true, and he knoweth that he saith true, that ye might believe. For these things were done, that the scripture should be fulfilled. A bone of him should not be broken. <clears throat> Again, another scripture saith, They took, they looked on him whom they pierced. And after this, Joseph of Arimathea, being a disciple of Jesus, but secretly for fear of the Jews, besought Pilate that he might take away the body of Jesus, and Pilate gave him leave. And he came therefore and took the body of Jesus. And there came also Nicodemus, which at the first came to Jesus by night and brought a mixture of myrrh and aloe, uh, about a hundred pounds weight. Then took they the body of Jesus and wound it up in linen cloths with the spices, as manner of the Jews is to bury. Now in the place where he was crucified, there was a garden. And in the garden a new uh, sepulchre, wherein was never man yet laid. And there laid they Jesus thereof, because of the Jews in preparation day, for the sepulchre was nine hands. <clears throat> Can't remember, is this 21 or 22? Uh, yeah, I think we'll just take a little break and come back and read some more. Then we get back when I get a little rest. We'll get on John chapter twenty and do chapter twenty-one, and then we should be done with John. Then we get jump right into the book of Revelation, which is going to tie in to the study that we that I did, uh, the reading of Roy Runya's work about the all the discourses of from a Matthew. Mark and Luke, and John's Alpha Discourse is actually the book of Revelation. So we then we will have a, a complete parallel of the four Gospels about what was expected of the God in the flesh, the Son of God, the Messiah, what was expected from Him, and what the, the the disciples and apostles expected from him what Jesus said and what they expected and you'll with some honest inquiry and study you'll come to realize that anything that anybody's saying about this be the end of the world or the second coming is down in the future don't know what they're talking about and that my friends is a source of freedom when you realize that they're not telling the truth and all the weird things that are happening and the evil things that are happening throughout the world have all, that always been happened throughout the world and it's just not being magnified and are now being recognized and witnessed through what? 
the internet of all things, social media. And at some point we'll snap out of the delusion of how wonderful this place is or how wonderful the Washington DC, which used to be Rome, Maryland and it's intense. And maybe, just maybe, we can start on a road of, of sanity instead of insanity. Maybe, maybe not. Maybe it will never be that way here in this plane of existence. Maybe the only source of sanity there ever will be is Jesus himself. Which, I'm, I'm putting my money on that. I'm putting my money on Jesus. Not a religion, but Jesus. Let's get back into the book of John. Now in chapter 20. The first day of the week cometh Mary Magdalene early, when it was yet dark. Unto the sepulcher, and seeth the stone taken, taken away from the sepulcher. Then she runneth, and cometh to Simon Peter, and to the other disciples whom Jesus loved, and saith unto them, They have taken away the Lord out of the sepulcher. We know not where they have laid him. And Peter therefore went forth, and that of other disciple, that other disciple, and came to the sepulcher. And so the, they ran both together, and the other disciple did not, did outrun Peter, and came first to the sepulcher. And he stooped and he stooping down and looking in saw the linen cloth lying yet he not in went yet went he not in then cometh simon peter following him and went into the sepulchre see if the linen cloth lie and the, na the napkin that was about his head not lying with the linen cloth but wrapped together in a place by itself then went in also the other disciple, which came first to the sepulchre, and he saw and believed. For as yet they knew not the scripture, that he must rise again from the dead. Then the disciples went away again unto their own home. Which is interesting that they didn't know that. After he told them. Still, it didn't, that part didn't go through, didn't register. But Mary stood without the sepulchre, weeping, and as she wept, she stooped down and looked into the sepulchre, and seeth two angels in white sitting. Angels, spirits. Spirits, did I just lose my place? I did. got myself thinking about angels and he saw two angels in white sitting and the one at the head and the other at the feet where the body of Jesus had lain and they saith unto her woman why weepest thou and Jesus saith unto them because they have taken away my Lord and I know not where they have laid him and when she had Thus said, she turned herself back and saw Jesus standing and knew not that it was Jesus. Interesting. And Jesus said unto her, Woman, why weepest thou? Whom seekest thou? And she, she, supposing him to be the gardener, said unto him, Sir, which that's weird. Don't you think... It must have been supernatural. Have you ever been with those supernatural experiences where things just don't make sense? A little bit of confusion going on? Spiritual realm involved? Things get real weird. Sir, if thou have borne him hence, tell me where thou hast laid him, and I will take him away. And Jesus saith unto her, Mary, she turned herself and saith unto him, Rabboni, which is a master remember there's call no man master call no man rabbi call no man father Jesus is not a fan he was never a man <clears throat> he was God oh, just in the flesh she said unto her touch me not for I am not yet ascended 
to my father. But go to my brethren and say unto them, I ascend unto my father and your father and to my God and to your God. If you're a believer in Jesus, who's your father? It's interesting how they corrupt that and made sure that us dads to our children are called father. Don't you think? <clears throat> Not being picky or anything, but if we believe in Jesus, we should believe in his words. I'm just saying. Where did they take the body of Jesus? We know Jesus. No, it, 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 the flesh and blood cannot be in the presence of the Spirit. The Spirit, Father, the Lord of all spirits. We know that Jesus today is actually a spirit in his kingdom. Which, by the way, being in the spiritual realm, being a spirit is far superior than being in the meat suit that we are and that we have dwelling on this plane of existence. Something to think about. So, what is the resurrection? Is it about the meat suit? Or is it about the spirit? Mary Magdalene came and told the disciples that she had seen the Lord and that he had spoken these things unto her. Then the same day at evening, being the first day of the week when the doors were sh shut, when the doors were shut, whence the disciples were assembled for fear of the Jews came Jesus and stood in the midst as unto them peace be unto you spirits can go through walls we know this and when he had so said he showed unto them his hands and his side and then Excuse me, then were the disciples glad when they saw the Lord. Then said Jesus unto them again, Peace be unto you, as my Father has sent me, even so I send you. And when he had said this, he breathed unto them, saith unto them, Receive the Holy Ghost. Whosoever sin ye remit, they are remitted unto them. And whosoever sin is retained, they are retained. This is interesting that he blew the uh, received the Holy Ghost. And we talk about then later on that um, now my mind just went blank. The day of Pentecost or whatever it is, whatever is at the time when they received Everyone received the Holy Ghost, right? But then here they received the Holy Ghost. And specifically, though, his apostles, his disciples were there. He received the Holy Ghost. It's in preparation for them to receive the Holy Ghost. And, 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 and shortly, and we read in Acts, or is it they, they already received the Holy Ghost? To give them power, them specifically, and nobody else. At this moment in time, nobody else, the power... Whosoever sins, ye remit, and they are remitted unto them. And whosoever sins ye retain, they are retained. Hmm. But Thomas, one of the twelve called Didymus, was not with them when Jesus came. Interesting. So did not Thomas receive the Holy Ghost? And the other disciples therefore said unto him, We have seen the Lord. But he said unto them, Except I shall see his hands, the print of the nails, and put my fingers into the print of the nails, thus my hand is into his side, I will not believe. Hmm. And after eight days again his disciples were within and Thomas with them then came Jesus and the doors being shut and stood in the midst and said peace be unto you then saith he to Thomas reach hither in my finger and behold my hands 
I reached hither thy hand, and thrust it into my side, and be not faithless, but be but believing. And Thomas answered and said unto him, My Lord, my God. And Jesus said unto him, Thomas, because thou hast seen me, and thou hast believed, blessed are they that have not seen, yet have believed. And many other signs truly did Jesus, uh, did many other signs truly did Jesus in the presence of his disciples which are not written in this book but these uh, these are written that ye might believe that Jesus is the Christ the Son of God and that believing ye might have life through his his name. I wonder if did Thomas receive and breathe this the Holy the Holy Ghost in uh, Thomas as well. After these things, Jesus showed himself again to the disciples at the Sea of Tiberias. On this wise showed he himself, and there were together Simon Peter, Thomas called Didymus, uh, Nathaniel the Canaan. Uh, the Canaan of Galilee, and the sons of Zebedee, and the two others of his disciples. And two others of his disciples. Excuse me. And Simon Peter said unto them, I go fishing. And they said unto him, We also go with thee. And they went forth and entered into a ship immediately. And that night they caught nothing. But when the morning was now come, Jesus stood on the shore but the disciples knew not that it was Jesus. Then Jesus saith unto them, Children, have ye any meat? They answered him, No. And he said unto them, Cast the, cast the net on the right side of the ship, not the left, the right, and ye shall find. They cast therefore, and now they were not able to draw it for the multitude of fishes. Very symbolic. Symbolic, really, isn't it? Of how many that we come to the Lord. Um, therefore, the disciple whom Jesus loved said unto Peter, It is the Lord. Now, when Simon Peter heard that it was the Lord, he girded his, sh his fisher's coat unto him, for he was naked and did cast himself into the sea. Interesting. And the other disciples came in a little ship, for they were not far from land, but as it were two hundred cubits, and dragged the net with fishes. And as soon, as soon then as they were come to land, they saw a fire of coal there, and fish laid thereon, and bread. And Jesus said unto them, Bring the fish which ye have now caught. And Simon went up and drew the net to land full of great fishes, and hundred and fifty-three. Hmm. Interesting number to remember. And for all there were so many. Yet was not the, the net broken. And Jesus saith unto them, Come and dine. And none of the disciples durst, <coughs> durst ask him, Who art thou? Knowing that it was the Lord. And Jesus then cometh and taketh bread and giveth them and the fish likewise. Just like if we had dinner with Abraham. Interesting. And this is now the third time that Jesus showed himself to his disciples. Number three. There's a, and after that he was risen from the dead. Excuse me. After that he was risen from the dead. So now, this now, the, thir the third time that Jesus showed himself to his disciple, after that he was risen from the dead. So when they had dined, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of Jonah, lovest thou me more than these? He saith unto him, Yea, Lord, thou knowest that I love thee. He saith unto him, Feed my lambs. 
And he saith to him again the second time, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me? He saith unto him, Yea, Lord, thou knowest that I love thee. He saith unto him, Feed my sheep. <clears throat> and he saith unto them a third time, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me? And Peter was grieved because he said unto him the third time, lovest thou me? And he said unto him, Lord, thou knowest all things. Thou knowest that I love thee. And Jesus saith unto him, feed my sheep. Verily, verily, I say unto thee, when thou wast young, thou girdest thyself and walkest whether thou wouldest. But when thou shalt be old, thou shalt stretch forth thy hands, and another shall gird thee, and carry thee whether thou wouldest not. This spake Jesus, signifying that, signifying by what death he should glorify God. And when he had spoken this, he saith unto him, Follow me. Then Peter, turning about, seeth the disciples, whom Jesus loved following, <coughs> which also leaned on the breast at the supper, being John, and said, Lord, which is he that betrayeth thee? And Peter seeth him, saith to Jesus, Lord, what shall this man do? And Jesus saith to him, If I will that he tarry till I come, what is think about this what he's saying this is very much more evidence more evidence that, that, that some of the disciples will still be alive at the second coming if thou tarry if if I will that he tarry till I come what is it to thee follow thou me then went <coughs> this saying abroad among the brethren that the disciples should that 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 disciples should not die yet and, and, until what <clears throat> until what Where did I see this? If I will that he tarry till I come, what is that to thee? Follow thou me. So, <clears throat> referring to reference to the second coming, who would still be there at the second coming? John. And John, when we get into the book of Revelation, is about... The second coming and the the revelation that an angel received from Jesus, which Jesus received from Heavenly Father, to John, to who? The seven churches of Asia and nobody today. And Jesus' second coming happened when? When John was still alive. If it didn't happen, then we're calling our Lord and Savior a liar. Or that we know more than him, or that we are ashamed of him and his words. I am not ashamed of my Lord's words. I might not understand everything, Lord of all spirits, but I'm not ashamed of your words. Today, it took a long time, thanks to you, God, for carrying hold of my hand. That's for sure. And then went this saying abroad among the brethren that that disciple should not die, that being John. Yet Jesus said not unto him, he shall not die. But if I, if I will that he tarry till I come, what is it to thee? And I was referring once again to the second coming. This is the disciple which testifieth of these things and wrote these things. We know that his testimony is true. 
And there are also many things which Jesus did, in which, if they should be written, every one, I suppose that even the world itself could not contain the books that should be written. Amen. And that's the end of the book of John. And then we will get into the book of Revelation. And those who've been following me <coughs> should see strongly the strong uh, evidence scripturally by the words of the Lord himself along with the disciples that his second coming happened in their generation. In time when the, the Jerusalem and the temple were destroyed and all things were finished, the end of the Mosaic Age. And that is good news. Those people are waiting for something that already happened. You misunderstand your Lord and Savior. And also you must understand the good news. That such a thing will not happen again. Everything that we see now is influenced by this, the darkness, the spirits of this darkness, along with men who are influenced by darkness, who refuse to follow their God, who love the world more than the truth. They love the world more than God. This is true. It's an unfortunate truism. And many people that claim to be Christians, whether Catholics, Mormons, Baptists, etc., etc., are so wrong and following the so are following the wrong Jesus. That is heartbreaking. It's truly heartbreaking to know that. Why do I understand this? I can only say it's got to be about the mercy and grace of God because it sure isn't about me and my wisdom. God made sure that I was not much of anything. Praise the Lord. I am not somebody to follow. I'm not someone to be uh, admired. I am nothing. He's destroyed me physically. Uh, a more, you know, and always just brought down to a level that I accept what he says and does. And I accept him because he's the Lord of all spirits. Jehovah. And Jesus the Christ. He's sitting, reigning of uh, Lord God Almighty on his throne in New Jerusalem. In his kingdom. The true paradise. And Lord God Almighty, the Lord of all spirits, may you allow me to be part of your kingdom. And if you won't let me be part of your kingdom, still let me serve you here. And anybody that hears this, but please bless them that they be part of your kingdom. Oh, Lord of, of all truth. Lord of life. The Lord of the way, the truth, and the life. The way of the Lord of light. The Lord of all us, the children of light. Lead us, God, back to you, each and every one of us, our children, our grandchildren, etc. Have great mercy on all of us. Protect our homes, ourselves, our bodies, our neighbors, our neighborhoods, our towns, our communities, etc. Throughout this whole world, God, pour your Holy Spirit upon this world and loosen your mighty angels to protect us at all sides. Help us to recognize who your protect mighty angels are. And if they don't look exactly the way that we want, help us at least recognize, give us the ability to understand who your, mighties are, your mighty angels are. Please loosen your mighty angels to protect us, our neighbors, our children, my son. And bless them all a million times more you ever bless me. Each and every one of them. Even those who don't believe in you now, God. Think that you're nothing but a joke. Have mercy on us all, God. Wake us up. Snap us out, God. Snap us out of our delusion. Our forced delusion. By all the lies of corrupt men. Whose true king is Caesar. And not you. Lord God Almighty, all praise and glory to you. Thank you, God. <clears throat>
lines. Interesting enough, it is 66 degrees. There are 66 books in the Bible. And around 66 AD, it was the beginning of the absolute end of the Mosaic Age. And the beginning around about the time of the, what? The Great Tribulation, the seven years of... <laughs> he give you 66 books. 66 AD. 66 degrees Fahrenheit. All praise and glory to you, Lord God Almighty. You're amazing. <laughs>